Kenji Ekuon was just a teenager when the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan, ultimately ending the Pacific theater of World War II. He was away at a naval college during the moments in which reality, as was previously known, was literally turned to ash and dust. When he returned home, he found his sister was killed. His father, a Buddhist priest, would have such severe radiation poisoning that he would only live another year before passing away himself. Experiencing this personal tragedy compounded with mass devastation that would ultimately motivate Ekuan to pursue a degree in design, or his Buddhist philosophy would permeate his work. He said in an interview with the New York Times reporter, Faced with that nothingness, I felt a great nostalgia for human culture. I needed something to touch, to look at, he added. Right then, I decided to be a maker of things. After briefly flirting with a career as a Buddhist priest himself, he instead continued towards a life as a designer, feeling it was his duty to influence the culture of post-war Japan. He graduated from the National University of Fine Arts and Music in Japan and founded GK Industrial Design Associates. In 1957, his team would be petitioned to embark on designing what would be one of his most celebrated and ubiquitous designs, the Kikoman Soy Sauce Bottle. The very bottle that lives on the tabletops of practically every sushi restaurant in the world. Soy sauce had long been a popular condiment in Japan, but prior to the invention of the new bottle design, the savory brown elixir was administered via small teapot-like clay pots. This pot had many disadvantages. They needed to be routinely refilled via heavy 2-liter bottles, and because of their clay construction, it was difficult to tell how much sauce was inside. The new bottle design would improve the functionality in just about every way. The bottles were clear, which was advantageous for filling and pouring. The high-waisted design made it feel incredibly natural in the hand, and the wide top allowed for seamless refills. The cap on the newly designed soy sauce bottles was one of the greatest accomplishments of the design, doing away with almost guaranteed spill and drips that would fall from the traditional container and stained tabletops. The new cap had an inverted spout angled upward, which allowed the sauce to drip back into the bottle when it was put back into a resting position. The new Kikoman bottle debuted in 1961 and served as an easily exportable product that was indicative of the new culture of post-war Japan. And don't worry, motorcycle fans, we're almost there. Soy sauce had always been a traditional element of Japan's culture, and the new bottle represented a contemporary direction the country was headed. The bottle was an early precursor to other symbols of Japanese culture that would be disseminated worldwide before brands like Sony or even Honda would become household names. Ekuan was incredibly deep with a monastic presence. He was thoughtful and egalitarian in his designs, creating products that would improve the lives of millions of people instead of just the privileged few. He designed commuter trains and logos for municipal buildings, work that may or may not be perceived as being particularly highbrow, but he felt that it was important to Japan as a whole. And almost antithetically, Ekuan and GK Design would be responsible for helping Yamaha develop their most un-Japanese motorcycle to date, the Yamaha VMAX. The VMAX first debuted in 1985 and was testament to the hubris and excess of the era. The motorcycle was a muscle cruiser that the industry had yet to experience. It was built to make serious power that would dwarf any American cruiser and even gave contemporaries like the Honda Magna a serious run for their money. The motorcycle was designed for the American market, built to mirror the experience of a big burly muscle car, providing plenty of power on tap with little regard to how it was handled. The V4 engine was making 143 horsepower thanks in part to the V-Boost system, that opened a butterfly valve in the intake manifold over 6,000 RPM, adding a 10% power increase. The styling choices were nothing short of polarizing, as the motorcycle was built to look unlike anything else on the market. The big air ducts on the side of the bike designed to look like the hood scoop of a muscle car. The VMAX quickly developed a cult following who adored the bike despite its shortcomings. Working closely with Yamaha at GK Design's California office, the team was able to capture the cultural identity of American motorsports at the time in a way that was surprisingly similar to Ekuan's early projects in Japan. There have been many great design achievements in the world of motorcycling, but one that cannot be disregarded is the Rockform phone case. I mean, look at this thing. Clean lines, a rugged yet sensual chassis, a magnet as strong as a mother's love for their firstborn child. The entire case is as impervious as a man's devotion to an airbrushed Hayabusa. And that's not even considering the crystal case, which is as transparent as it is opulent. A case made for candlelit dinners and benefit galas with society's most generous philanthropists. And the mounting system. It is firm, it is reliable, it has your back, 
back even in the darkest moments. Its job is only to hold your phone, but manages to do so much more. It is your rock, a shelter in a storm, an old friend who answers every time you call no matter how much time has passed. You need this devotion in your life. Hit the link down below, grab a phone case, grab a mount, use the code YN25 to get 25% off of your order and stop going through the world alone. Use code YN25, you deserve it. Thank you, Rock Form. Now back to the video. Philip Stark is a French industrialist designer who has created unique products across a diverse range of industries. His portfolio is truly massive, encompassing areas such as architecture, furniture, clothing, houseware, flooring, and vehicles. He has collections of work in the Modern Art Museum in France, the MoMA in New York, and the Design Museum of London. One of his most notable works is the Juicy Salif Juicer, a product recognized as being one of the great significance capturing the aesthetic essence of the 1990s. The idea came from seeing a piece of calamari served with a lemon. I think we can all see the resemblance. He also designed the Louis Ghost Chair, a transparent polycarbonate version of the Louis XV armchair. The Ghost Chair is produced by Cartel and is still recognized as one of their best-selling chairs. Over 20 years it was originally developed, it is also said that the Louis Ghost Chair is one of the most copied and reproduced plastic chairs in the world, although I'm not sure how that is quantified, but I guess I believe it. He's also built buildings in Japan, hotels in New York and Miami, and even collaborated on the design of the Living Space Housing Module within the International Space Station. And I know what you're thinking. What do all these hoity-toity liberal elite home goods made by some French sissy boy have to do with motorcycles? Well, if you just hold your horses, I'm getting to that. Stark, known for his experimental and contemporary motorcycle design, was also hired by Aprilia to design their Moto 6.5 motorcycle for the 1995 model year. This bike was designed to be a small around town urban commuter. It used the same 650cc engine from the Aprilia Pegaso that made about 42 horsepower. Unfortunately, as you can probably guess, since few know about this bike, it wasn't a smashing success. It handled poorly at speeds, it was uncomfortable for long rides, and it looked like a horse dressed as a Tamagotchi for Halloween. A quote from a reviewer at the time reads, This is not a bike for riders seeking either speed or touring ability, but provided its limitations are accepted, the Moto 6.5 works well. There are motorcycles that provide more versatility for similar money, but Stark's creation backs up its stylish looks by being nippy, practical, and much more fun than public transportation. So essentially the sentiment was, if you can handle the weird looks, it sure beats walking. Production was stopped for Aprilia's Moto 6.5 in 1996. Philip Stark doesn't have any other motorcycle designs on his resume, but he has designed bicycles and yachts, including Steve Jobs' yacht, Venus. Italian designer Giorgetto Giugiaro has had a massive influence in the world of automotive design. The imprint he left on the industry was so prominent, he was even named Car Designer of the Century in 1999. He has been designing cars, among other products, since the 1960s. He was a pivotal contributor to many of the changing trends of automotive design, like the folded paper style car with flat angular lines, like the BMW M1, the Lotus Esprit S1, and the Maserati Bora. He has dozens of car designs in his portfolio, ranging from exotic sports cars, affordable commuters, and even some Suzuki K-trucks. One of his most commercially successful vehicle designs was the Volkswagen Golf, which was originally released in 1974. But what could be considered his most noteworthy car design was the DMC DeLorean, which of course became a fixture of popular culture when it served as the platform for the time machine in the three Back to the Future films. While he may be most known for his automotive designs, Giugiaro has tried his hand in other industries as well. Some of his other designs include Seiko wristwatches, including the Speedmaster and the Machina Sportiva, and 11 different Nikon cameras. Despite all this, I found it most interesting that he developed a pasta shape. The Italian car designer invented the Muriel Pasta. Despite being a food product, the Muriel shape still pays homage to the automotive world, as his shape was inspired by a section of automobile door gas. From the side, the shape sort of resembles the Greek beta symbol. And staying true to the Neapolitan tradition, the exterior of the pasta is smooth, although the inside is ridged for maximum sauce retention. These Italians do not mess around when it comes to pasta, do they? So Giugiaro, the car designer of the year, Pasta Gourmand, designer of the DeLorean, also has a few motorcycle designs under his belt. He designed the Ducati 860 GT, which was controversial upon its release. 
This bike featured many mechanical Ducati staples as both the air-cooled L-twin engine and stressed member frame came from Fabio Taglioni's original 750 GT, but Giugiara's overall design of the 860 GT was a departure from the previous model. He attempted to use the same folded paper design that was popular in cars at the time. The gas tank was angular, as was the rear seat cowl. This bike uses a large squared off steel engine case, which differed drastically from the round cases on the 750. As a result of this critical reception, the 860 GT was quickly restyled for the next model year. But the Ducati 860 GT wasn't the only motorcycle design from Giugiaro that really flopped. He was the madman behind the RE5, Suzuki's infamously short-lived rotary engine motorcycle. Released in 1974, the RE5 was very quick to receive criticism. The Wankel rotary engine was small in size, but incredibly mechanically complex. Its high heat output required both oil and liquid cooling, and all necessary subsystems made the bike much heavier than expected. You can see some of Giugiaro's influence in the design, as it is a bit edgier and more aggressive than most other Japanese roadsters of the time. It also had other quirky designs additions like the tin can instrument cluster. Giugiaro is also responsible for the MV Augusta 350 Ipotesi. After the death of Count Augusta in 1974, which definitely sounds like a vampire of some sort, he was commissioned by the brand to design a brand new modern middleweight motorcycle to compete with the Japanese competition that seemed very much to be on a mission to put most other manufacturers out of business. The Ipotesi looked very much like you would expect it to, with sharp lines and aggressive contours, from cars to pasta to motorcycles, this man truly did it all. KTM has had a long and oftentimes miserable tenure in the motorcycling world. In the early 90s, the company was divided and the motorcycle division had changed hands yet again. It is then that KTM evolved from a company that made car radiators alongside advanced dirt bikes to the KTM we know today. A major player in this evolution was designer Gerald Kiska. Kiska established a relationship with KTM owner Stefan Pierre after winning a design contest. In the most simple aspect, Kiska created what we recognize as the modern KTM brand. He designed the current KTM logo and began use of the signature orange colorway. He was involved in the development of the Ready to Race slogan and created a formal design ethos that focused on purity, performance, adventure, and the extreme. In the mid-90s, KTM started releasing what would become flagship bikes with the Duke series and early adventure model. Kiska is even responsible for designing the RC8 race bike, a personal favorite of mine. This all began over 30 years ago and Kiska still works with KTM and Husqvarna today. KTM even owns 25% of a stake in Kiska's personal design firm. If you're at all interested in design or branding, KTM and Husqvarna are both very impressive case studies. KTM's brand has become even more solidified with its nude characteristics, including Austria, aggressive, full, edgy, high-tech, loud, dark, hot, fire, wild, and lightweight. And Husqvarna's characteristics being Sweden, progressive, minimal, smooth, scientific, detailed, light, cold, ice, refined, and avant-garde. Kiska's portfolio extends beyond his automotive work with KTM. He's also worked with Adidas, AKG Acoustics, Elgato Audio Equipment, Swarovski Optic, and more. He definitely deserves a lot of recognition for what he was able to do with a failing motorcycle brand. Obviously, a ton of work went into engineering the mechanical aspects of the machines, but he really managed to package them in a way that was striking and unique, and unlike pretty much any other motorcycle for a long time. Thanks for making it to the end of this one. It was a really interesting video to research and learn more about. When it comes to motorcycle designs, we often think of industry legends like Massimo Tamburini and Pierre Turplanche, but it really is fascinating to see which designers were able to move through different worlds and channel their unique style and design philosophies through drastically different mediums. I hope you learned something new today, or at the very least, you've had some fun with new exotic factoids to share with your friends. Speaking of, fact. Motorcycle designer David Robb, who is responsible for many motorcycles at BMW, including the infamous F650 CS Scarver, is a brother of Doug Robb, the vocalist and rhythm guitarist for the band Hoobastank. Thank you, Wikipedia. Goodbye. I'm like a bird, I wanna fly away. I don't know where my soul is. I don't know where my home is. Da 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 da, I'm like a bird, I wanna fly away. I don't know where my soul is. Oh, hey. Um, you're still here. Uh, man, this is awkward. You should, um, fuck. You should keep watching Yami Noob.